Hello and welcome to another jungle video and in this one we are going to talk about the phrase jungle difference, what it means and how you can actually dominate the enemy and make sure that your laners are satisfied for all life. With that hyperbole aside, really a lot of things that are important for junglers at the moment, specifically with the volatility of that experience nerve, new metas being explored and laners being laners, you have to understand that while you might be doing good things say on the bottom lane, the implications for your decisions affect the entire map and so while laners use this as an insult and it's annoying and it tilts us, there is an element of truth when it is said and you will know if you are being the better jungler in a specific game. So as always, if you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like, commenting and even subscribing. Don't forget to head to the Vakayu gameplay channel with multiple champion gameplays a week. And now without hesitation, let's begin. So we're going to break down these core scenarios and examples and hopefully provide you some good ideas of what a good jungler and bad jungler can look like. I mean, that's what we're about here, right? Elevated big brain decision making. Removing the enemy jungler from the game and no one will ever say jungle diff to you again, except the enemy team and then you're smiling. Let me show you a high diamond slash master tier game and then you can cry. Right, so we're against a Rengar in this situation. We don't know what he's doing, where he's studying, what exactly his game plan is. But the Hecarim decides I'm going to start on the top side because bottom lane is the lane we want to camp. It's the lane we want to snowball and it allows me to collect dragons like I'm playing Skyrim on whatever console is released in 2026. And we'd still be waiting for the next Elder Scrolls. However, what can happen in these situations, specifically with engaged lanes, when there's a rel, very, very strong champion, when your bottom lane are more pokey pokey, maybe susceptible to those hard engages level two and three, things can become very volatile. At the same time, your laners might do random things. So while his game plan and understanding of the first clay is very important, he knows by the delay of Rengar's bottom lane showing that he started on the blue buff. Switching it up, doesn't want to get invaded, might be looking to have a different game plan. Now as you watch the horse graze the grass, eat the other animals, and basically enjoying all that nature can provide, the bottom lane is rocking in a weird, weird 2v2. They're fighting it out, who knows what's going on. We switch back to the Hecarim, he's gonna do his red buff. He wants to make sure that's secure. I mean, you know Rengar's pathing to the top side, but you don't know if you're gonna get invaded, so we might as well secure that. Bottom lane, things are getting really serious, duking it out, people are close to dying. All of a sudden, someone does fall, Hecarim is walking up. He's, he's actually not walking to the bottom lane. All of a sudden, he reaches the river, he actually notices that something was happening, and finally rotates to pick up a kill, except the Misfortune executes to the center, so the center gets two, the Misfortune gets two, the Hecarim gets nothing, and now is complaining that his time was wasted. Meanwhile, Rengar is diving on the top lane. Rengar had a plan for a four clear and a dive on the top side, he did it. Hecarim had a plan to gank on the bottom side, but did not have the map awareness or, you know, functioning brain capacity to actually see, look, skip the red, go to the bottom lane, win that 2v2, go to the crab afterwards, let your bottom lane push and reset to have an inherent item advantage. Now you can think about doing a double crab, ganking mid lane, and then doing your red afterwards. Don't be so stuck on doing your buffs if you need to rotate to a situation. Map awareness, activate it. Understanding how and when to invade is one of the most important aspects of jungling and I'm going to show you this kindred really enjoying feeding all of the starving people on Summoner's Rift because they just walk into the jungle and they die. At no point do they have lane prior. At no point do they recognize that the enemy laners are pushing and can rotate faster. They are greedy for marks, they are greedy for camps and all this does is int the enemy laners. You give them experience, gold, buffs and what have you. Now your laners are inherently in a difficult spot. If you find yourself invading enemy junglers and getting collapsed upon a lot and basically you come into discords and Twitter and you say, listen, my laners never rotate, it's a tragedy, I'm upset. Usually the problem is on you. If something happens so often with the randomness of your teammates that change every single game, you are the issue. And I released a guide on counter jungling, tracking and invading to solve that, but that's not really a sexy topic, so people don't watch it as much, but I will link it below if you are having this particular issue. Finally, optimizing your ward control, understanding it from your perspective and the enemy teams, as well as the ganking and counter ganking nature of the map awareness we just talked about. Observe a Skana. I'm gonna do my red buff. What do you think his first clear is going to be? Usually Krugs into Raptors, but as you can see, he's doing Raptors into Krugs. This is a great classical season 9 clear that people used to do with Talia, Rek'Sai, what have you. And immediately you then gank on the bottom side. This is actually very useful for lanes that can capitalize on that and snowball an advantage. The thing is, as you can see, Skarner is against a Karthus. Karthus got a leash. 
is now going to do a full clear all the way up and we know by 305 at the latest he should have done his crux because he's Karthus. The Senna probably wastes a little too much time hanging around trying to help you out, but that cheeky ward at the Grump will help you track Karthus's further sequencing when the second one spawns at around 4 minutes. However, the good execution and the understanding of making the most of the first full clear doesn't mean that he understands the champion matchups. What does Karthus want to do? Farm well, counter gank a lot, and then make sure he scales and outscales using his ultimate. It also means that if you understand champion matchups and dynamics, you know full well this guy started blue, he's gonna 6 camp, he's gonna look to do that crab, and because you 3 camped bottom lane, if you don't exactly gank again, he might simply counter jungle your blue side and now you're really kinda screwed. The problem with this is once you've done the crab and you go to the mid lane for the gank on the Tristana, one it's her Tristana, she can jump away and flash, however as you go in for it, let's slow it down, she's moving up directly to the top side river. I mean where did we say Karthus was going to be, it's really easy, top crab. If she doesn't have backup in the top side river, she's probably walking closer to tower or at least trying to hop over and get away. This behavior coupled with our jungle tracking means you know 100% that Karthus is there, he's gonna counter gank it and he's going to kill you. This is horrific level jungling, great first clear understanding, great first gank, very nice, good crab, bad tracking, bad map awareness and not understanding the counter ganking potential of a Karthus of a jungler like this that can farm while you spend your time ganking. The thing is, now you lose your tier 1 Raptors, which is a lot of experience, the Karthus is inherently going to go back to base, down to his grump, and then sequence all the way up again. This means as the Skana goes to his top side to do his blue camps and sequences down again, you are pathing to the opposite side. Let's skip forward time just a little bit. The Karthus is now on his third rotation. We saw him with visual confirmation at the blue buff. 1000% he has done the blue and sequenced up again. The Skana decides, let me flash, use everything on the bottom lane again. Gets a free kill. Now what should you do immediately in this position? Do you perhaps go back to farming your camps? Do you go back to base? Do you push the wave? Or should you immediately turn to the dragon? Yeah, you should immediately turn to the dragon. Kill conversion ratio. You had a gank, well done, you used your ultimate to perfection, very important for all junglers. And now we can secure an objective from this action. The reason we know it's safe is purely because the Karthus is sequencing upside, we had the confirmation, and you know by inference that because he sees you gank on the bottom side, the Karthus will want to secure the Herald. The problem is he doesn't immediately take the dragon, he waffles, he gets pinged about it, eventually goes to it, it's watered by the Leona, the center wants to help you, this is not very good supporting rotation either. And now you've delayed taking it as the jungler, the bottom lane has respawned, Karthus has his ult, your ADC is not in a position to assist, you don't smite it and you lose the dragon for nothing. Now most of you might be thinking, well hold up, the bottom lane could have helped, True, but at the same time the Skana wasted all valuable time by going back to base and then cancelling. If he goes directly to the dragon, they secure it 100%, there's no issues, and they can carry on about their game plan. And ultimately, the warding control that we just mentioned from Leona's perspective gave away their intentions. Because of the delay in doing the dragon, the center walked over a ward, the Skana showed on a control ward in the river, and this gave away what they wanted to do. Keep your scanners fresh, keep your control wards ready, and never as a jungler hesitate to use these things when you want to focus on an objective. If you move from, you know, bottom lane to the dragon, move your wards to control the area. If you go back to base and then want to do the herald, move your wards to that area. This allows you to keep security around your control zone, and then, you know, not lose the entire game over, you know, a few silly plays. So maybe you've been in the scanner's position, you gank the hell out of bottom lane, you gank mid lane, you actually die a few times unexpectedly, and now you're getting flamed for being jungle gapped. And in this case, as the Skana, if you were playing like this, you would have been 100%. You can understand why your mid laner is upset you fed the Tristana. You can understand why the bottom laners are upset you didn't go straight for the dragon, or even that you fed the Leona a little bit by that counter gank on the mid lane. And the final thing we want to talk about again that kind of brings all of these examples into one frame, you might see people talking about being a farming jungler and doing full clears. But again, understanding your champion matchup, the dynamics, how to make the most of your first clears, all of that is core jungling. Now we have a Jarvan, he invades with his team, sometimes this happens, you get lucky, and sometimes you get kills, sometimes you don't. At the very least, you can ward and you know Kane is starting on the top side. Jarvan decides to start on his blue and then Grump. Unlike the Hecarim from the earlier example, has an engaged map awareness and says, you know what, top lane is very low, top die. Now at this point, what do you think his options are as Jarvan? He can gank mid lane, he can go down and do the wolves, or he can simply return back to base.
Now, yes, I love the idea of actually heading down to do a mid lane gank as well. Gives you prior to defend your red buff. But if the enemy TPs back in, not respecting you, you simply do it again. I don't know why this would happen in a higher elo game, but it does. Now, you know the cane at this point is 100% going to your red. It's normal. It's expected. You spend a lot of time top lane. The Jarvan decides I have this elevated map awareness. And what I'm going to do is rush Moby Boots and sprint all the way to the red buff to stop it being stolen. Now, overall, would this have worked if the Kane had respect of matchups and understanding of timings? No, because he did the Raptors pretty easily, but what he should have done is drag the red buff into the bush on the side so when the Jarvan inevitably shows up, he wouldn't actually be able to outsmite him, which of course he does. Now the Kane is forced to run away, he doesn't have bottom lane prior, he doesn't have mid lane prior, and he's dead. Now, should you have support try to help you? Probably not. She probably should have just let you die. But because she did try to help you, gets flashed, hooked, and killed. Again, the Jarvan has elevated map awareness. Says, you know what? Senna's low. Zyra's dead. I'm going to take the crab and then dive the hell out of the Senna. Which he does. The problem is he didn't track the enemy Kane this time. The Kane floats on down and grabs a kill. The point is, at this stage of the game, if you look at the scorecard, Kane is 1-1-0. Jarvan is 2-1-3 and has more CS. Now, yes, because of the cadence of the respawns and the death timers, the Kane will get a little bit of a lead from his farm, but his laners are all drastically impacted by this. Top laner was killed, bottom lane is really in a rough position, and yes, Kane will out-farm. Yes, Kane will out-experience, and yes, he will become the demonic Rast Hellspawn that dominates things like Jarvan's, but in the meantime, the implications for the Jarvan's pressure basically mean the entire game now, at least in the early phase, has to be much more cautious for every single one of the red team. That's why active jungling can be so great, but as you saw from the Karthus, if you have your wits about you, and you actually make those counter ganks, those good tracking reads, objective secures, it's much easier to negate their sort of ganking effects early, and then you end up scaling faster, harder, and honestly watching enemy laners tilt because of this, it's very fun, I enjoy it. But there you have it, just a few core principles I think that are really important in jungling at the moment, learning your jungle matchups, understanding what champions want to do, the same for laners, understanding the implications of your decisions on those lanes in terms of how they snowball, and then making the most of your first clears, ganking, counter ganking, knowing when to invade, keeping your vision control absolutely supreme, and then last but not least, please activate your minimap, use it, use your tracking, keep it all together. If you see something you can rotate to to help out and get two kills, do it. The red buff will be waiting for you, she loves you, don't worry. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, and comment if you did enjoy and learn something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and the secondary channel for all the jungle content you might need, as well as flaming of enemy junglers when they do wrong. Keep those beards fluffy and vibrant, and as always, I will see you all in the next tutorial.